Hello photographer, welcome back to my channel. It's Belinda and this is where we talk all about photography from inspiration to camera techniques to editing skills so that you could take better photos. So in this episode, we are looking at the work of late Fan Ho. He was born originally in Shanghai and shortly after the end of World War II, he and his family moved to Hong Kong. His work is mostly known for having a really high contrast look in which the shadows tend to drop into blacks, whereas the midtones are relatively limited and the rest are pretty much highlights that are really bright and tends to merge into the whites. In doing so, Fan Ho was actually removing unnecessary details that were in a frame, but were not really helpful in enhancing the image, both in terms of composition and storytelling. This is especially apparent in his earlier works, where his subjects typically feature fishermen, boats, lakes, with an inclusion of plants. His approach of eliminating the midtones and turning everything into either highlights or shadows gives his work this painterly quality that is especially apparent in his earlier works. He's also known for being incredibly masterful in the use of light. Well, quoting himself as he said in his interviews, he loves playing with light. Mist and smoke makes a frequent appearance in his work. Here we have an image of a girl surrounded by smoke, this is probably taken inside a temple where people burnt incense offerings to ask for good fortune, as you can see from the woman on the left. This is an image of hawkers, as its title suggests, and the smoke, which I guess was the gas generated from heating up the food, caught the light rays perfectly to create a patch of highlights, effectively being separated from the rest of the image. To be honest, Hong Kong looks very different today and so I can't really say for sure what was creating the smoke here, but an educated guess would be steam generated by cooking and perhaps burning coal. This picture is certainly mind-blowing. What appeared as a smoke was basically dust particles and sand captured with the help of the right amount of motion blur. Now this misty character underlies his entire body of work, as we shall see, and this is worth noting because if you've ever attempted to capture smoke, you would know that it's not always apparent on camera. Fan Ho definitely has a very thorough understanding of how light interacts and shows up across various textures. He passed away five years ago in the US, but his works are still being exhibited in various parts of the world every now and then. Fan Ho is an incredibly talented and renowned photographer and really one of its kind, and therefore a lot has been spoken about him. Specifically in this video, I am speaking from the perspective of someone that grew up in Hong Kong to add on to the pre-existing discussion on the work of Fan Ho. If you just take some time to look through the images of Fan Ho, without difficulty, you would notice that a lot of these images came with a very weird, unconventional aspect ratio. Many of these images are extremely elongated horizontally or vertically. Throughout his entire career, Fan Ho actually shared publicly about his views on cropping, which differed considerably from what other photographers contend during his time, one of which most notably is Henri Cartier-Bresson, which we'll return to later. Fan Ho talked about his love for the square format, aka the 6x6 middle format film, because that offers great versatility for him to crop images and to revisit them to create new compositions out of the piece of negative. He demonstrated using his image titled School is Over. So basically the story was that this was actually part of a square negative. The original intent was to shoot some tram rails that was being cropped off obviously from this photo. He didn't like the photo at the time and he tucked it away. However, when he revisited the piece of negative, he realized that these two children actually made for really nice subjects and that this photo would work and so he took out what worked from the photo aka these two kids and this became a new image in itself. Now this is significant considering that Henri Cartier-Bresson was a source of inspiration for Fan Ho. But Henri, taking a completely different stance on the matter, is adamant about having the framing perfect in camera. He believes that it's a photographer's job to make sure that the perfect framing is achieved in that very moment, known as the decisive moment. I think it's quite apparent that Fan Ho did look up to Henri. There were aspects of Henri's work that had an influence on Fan Ho's work. So the lesson here is that it's quite one thing to to have heroes in your photography journey, to have photographers 
who you look up to, but it's quite another to follow blindly whatever they do and just be their shadow. It's of course beneficial to study what has come before you, to learn the rules, the conventions that other photographers stand for and advocate for, but it's always gonna be worth it for you to have your own opinion on things because just like most things, the rules, so-called rules in photography does have two sides to it. So these rules are only rules to the extent that they work for you as they have worked perfectly well in Fan Ho's work to bring out the purpose of these images. We talked about forming your own opinion on issues in relation to photography, but then the real question becomes, how do you do that? Van Ho teaches us that the answer to this is to experiment. Now, I think that his masterpiece, titled Approaching Shadow, drives home this point perfectly. During Van Ho's time, and actually even till today, a highly debated issue among photographers is that whether or not photography needs to reflect the truth. So to what extent should an image reflect reality, quote unquote? Translating it into practical terms, would it be appropriate for you to direct your models, direct your subjects, introduce foreign elements into your photos, so essentially adopting an approach that is borderline design? Would that be appropriate and can you still call that photography? Apparently to this question, there's no simple yes, no answer. And here is how Fan Ho arrived at his conclusion. In an early event, he shared about the behind the scenes of how this image was made. So the first thing worth noting is that he directed the model in frame. So he introduced a female subject who is a relative of his. And the second interesting thing about this image is the fact that this triangle in the shadows in the lower part of the frame was added in post-processing. That is, the original background was just a plain white piece of wall. And this, according to Fan Ho, was the only instance in which he added external deliberate elements of design into his images. But at the same time, he realized that he actually enjoyed working with direction. From this point onward, he made quite a few pieces of work in which he directed his friends and schoolmates to be his models and to act out the story that he has in mind. So the result of this experiment was that Fan Ho realized that he actually liked directing people and that's what he goes on to do. But on the other hand, he doesn't really like to add elements in relation to design into his photos, that's just not how he wants to work. The way I see it is that this piece of experiment formed his opinion on the issue of whether or not photography needs to reflect reality and if yes, to an extent. Judging from his entire body of work, his stance in relation to this question stands somewhat in the middle. So on one hand, there is a clear intention to use fine art elements like geometry, lines, shapes to create compositions that look appealing to the eye, but on the other hand, the objects and the backgrounds that he chose to use do resemble what they look like in real life. So the lesson here is that you've got to experiment because most of the time the issues in relation to photography are not clear-cut either or situations. It's seldom dichotomous and that's why it's only through experimentation will you be able to work out where exactly you sit on that spectrum. Fan Ho, in my opinion, was an extremely cultured individual. His sources of inspiration span across a wide range of mediums. For one, he was passionate about writing, he loved Chinese poetry and Western novels, he was into movies, and he also had an appreciation for music, which, if you think about it, is quite a lot for the average human being, let alone for a young man brought up in the Asian world at that time. This is what he regarded as his favorite image, titled As Evening Hurries By. In Cantonese, it reads Yap Mo Tou Yun. So the literal meaning of these four characters is that the sun is setting, but I still have a long way to go. That is what it means literally, but there is a historic meaning that goes deeper, which I cannot afford to go into in this video. As for this image, titled Forget Me Not, this is a composite that was inspired by this line. Without getting into too much detail, this line is describing a situation in which soldiers died in a war, their partners are thinking of them and mourning for them day and night. What's interesting about this image was that it was a composite that was created out of two negatives that were totally irrelevant to each other initially. So in the background, it was a picture of a city post-war, which I believe would be this one titled After the War. Well, I'm not quite sure if it's the exact same image because if you look closely, you can tell that the buildings were the same in the two images just horizontally flipped but the people in front do not seem to match up. There were some similarities, but they are not entirely the same. So it probably was a different image taken at the same spot at a similar vantage point. But either way, it is an image that Fan Ho took after the war, and whereas the image of this girl was a portraiture taken quite many years after the war. And so that is how this image, Forget Me Not, came to be. 
Apart from Chinese literature, he was also inspired by many other sources, the first of which being Western novels. So for example, he was inspired by Ernest Hemingway's The Old Man and the Sea, as well as Les Mis by Victor Hugo. He also counted a bunch of movies that he was inspired by, for instance, The Bicycle Thief. He also loved the movies by the Italian director Fellini. Something that runs throughout the vein of these stories, something that they share in common, is a theme of social injustice. They revolved around how the working class fought really hard to challenge authorities, to challenge establishment, aka the people who were in power at the time. Being exposed to themes like these, Fano started seeing that there is actually quite a similar spirit that is present among people in Hong Kong, aka his community. So with his craft, he went on to document and celebrate the hard work of Hong Kong people, featuring unsung heroes, people who are less privileged, even marginalized by society. And this became a revolutionary approach that is unique to his as compared to what other photographers were doing at his time. I might be biased on this because I myself grew up in Hong Kong, but when I look at the work of Fan Ho, I can feel the empathy and the love he feels for the city and the people therein. And he did say so himself plainly that he loves Hong Kong. And so I think that really shines through his work. We can therefore see that it's really important for a photographer to feel connected to the place that they are photographing in, because this personal connection that you share with a place is unique to yourself. And this is what makes you the best person to create the work that you're creating, whatever you're working on. What makes him even more interesting in my opinion is the fact that Fan Ho was actually born to a merchant. Based on the fact that he lives on McDonald Road, which was a decently affluent area to live in and it still actually is today. Fan Ho came from a relatively privileged family and that he was relatively well off. Technically, he came from a totally different world from those people who he was photographing. This just says so much about how much he loves the city. He relates to the hardships and all the struggles as if they were his own. He feels that he belongs to this city and this is what motivates him to explore the areas close to his house and eventually he found a few of his favorite places to photograph. Now if you look at some of his most well done images of the stairs and the mist and the afternoon sun, I took a deeper look into his series of very similar images taken on the stairs which I believe was the market that Fan Ho referred to when he recalled his favorite photo spot. Again, Hong Kong looks pretty much very different today and I've never really seen this exact same place in person, but it's reasonable for me to assume that these were all taken at the same place. For instance, comparing down on the left and out with mom and dad on the right, if you just zoom in, you see the same set of writings on the walls pointing people to the ways up and down. These were taken a year apart. There were quite a few more taken at a similar location, if not the same. Take note of the year in which they were made and we will learn that these were created across the span of a few years. So what I imagine that Fan Ho did was basically wait at the same place with his camera at the time when the slide comes out over the duration of a full three years. And this shows just how dedicated and connected he feels towards his neighborhood. From a technical and aesthetical standpoint, if you will, of course, these images are incredibly executed, they're well composed, and they look balanced and all of that. But what really makes these images more than just mere coincidences that happened to be there and that Fan Ho happened to be able to capture is the fact that these photos contain an interpretation of the community. So it is Fan Ho's version of the reality. Through watching his images, you you're not only looking into what the society looked like at that time, but you're actually looking into the perspective of Fan Ho in relation to what he sees to be worthy of being photographed. I chose to feature Fan Ho because I know that a lot of you on this channel are really fond of light and shadows, therefore I think that his work will speak to a lot of you. If you want to look at his work in greater detail, which I highly encourage you to do, check out the links in the description box below where I linked to his official pages and a few of his interviews that he did earlier on. If you like the work of Fan Ho, I've also put together a blog post containing a list of the works of other photographers who are also masters in light and shadow. You can also find it among the links in the box below. I hope that you found all the information helpful and inspiring. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! which 
reads， 可怜无定河边骨，犹是深闺梦里人。Which literally means um. <laughs> Wow.、Um, okay, so the literal meaning of this is that 